What you want to do is, for your child, is that you want the best for the best in them. That's what you want. And that's what you want from people that you surround yourself with. Now, they'll hold you to a high standard if that's the case, right? Because whenever you degenerate in any of the multiple ways that you're likely to degenerate, they're going to, like, whack you on the back of the head and say, you know, clue the hell in. You know, you're, you're demeaning yourself. You're less than you could be. And there, there's real judgment in that, and it's harsh. You know, but with friends, it's the same thing. You want friends. They're not friends if they're not these people. You want friends who, when something good happens to you, they're, that's good for you, right? They're happy about that. They're not like all bitter and resentful underground and like saying horrible things behind your back and telling you how they did something that was better and trying to drag you down. It's like, that's not helpful. And then when something bad happens to you and you go to them and you say, look, this terrible thing happened to me. First of all, they don't try to top it with some like horrible thing that happened to them because <laughs> they don't have the patience to listen. And second, they're not secretly gloating about the fact that catastrophe finally befell you. Mm -hmm. It's like they're actually hurt by it. And th that chapter is an injunction is like, take a look at the people that are around you. And if they're not on the side of what's good for you, then walk away because well, first of all, that's best for them, too. If you put up with that, all you're doing is enabling it. It's like, well, it's okay that you mistreat me in a way that's harmful to me and everyone else. It's like, actually, no, that is not okay. It's not, in, it's not the least bit okay. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try to help someone when they're down. That's a whole different issue. Sometimes someone's on an incorrigible path. There's just nothing you can do. You know, maybe they're aiming down. They're aiming down hard. And they're bitter and everything they do is to produce misery, virtually everything. Mm -hmm. And you have to detach yourself from that. It's like I always think about it from the perspective of a lifeguard. So if you're training to be a lifeguard, one of the things that you're trained to do is to approach someone who's drowning and panicking. Mm -hmm. And the way you approach them is you put your foot out between you and them and you push forward with your hands with your foot out mm -hmm. and you basically tell them if they're flailing about you say look i'm here to help but you have to calm down and then if they cling to you like in panic you push them away you think well that's pretty damn cruel because what if they drown it's like yeah what if you both drown mm -hmm. that's like not helpful you're you're there to rescue them they take you down you're both dead it's like fail right yeah. so you say look quit panicking i'll help you out but i'm not drowning along with you it's like, well, it's the same with someone in your family. It's like, if they're on a downward path and you've done your best, you know, you've, you've made your efforts, you've, and they're not paying attention, they're not changing. They say, yeah, well, I'll quit doing this. Yeah, I'll quit doing this. They tell you the same story over and over and over. It's a downhill path. Mm -hmm. You don't trust it. At some point, first of all, you stop offering your words. That's do not cast pearls before swine a very very harsh statement right but what it means is if someone if you're offering words of wisdom to someone in the genuine attempt to help and they treat that with contempt then shut up because you're demeaning your words by throwing them away you think well how do you help someone who's aiming down Sometimes you help them by walking away and saying, look, you're aiming down so hard that I am, no, despite the fact you're my brother, man, it's like, you know, this is killing me. You're aiming down so hard, I'm not coming along with you. And the reason I'm not is to tell you in no uncertain terms that what you're doing is so terrible that I will even violate our kinship to oppose it. And maybe it'll take them 10 years to wake up to that, you know? And so, that can be the case because, you know, people often have to be hit so many times before they'll learn. You see that especially if someone's addicted or, yeah. or, or otherwise pursuing a pathway that's like seriously downhill. So why should I think that you're actually trying to change? Maybe you're just telling me is, you're, you tell me the story that you use to justify your own idiocy to yourself. And then you tell it to me and you demand that because I'm compassionate, I accept it and therefore validate your excuse. It's like, well, that, like, it's really hard not to get tangled up in that, right? Because mm -hmm. if someone who's really in rough shape is telling you about why they're suffering, first of all, they're probably about half right in their story. Mm -hmm. But some of it's justification and excuse and blaming and all of that, failure to take responsibility. It's really hard to stand up and say, no, I don't buy that. No, I don't buy that. No, you're wrong about that. You have to be a brutal bastard in order to do that. But hey, sometimes, like, surgery is brutal, mm -hmm. right? 
It's brutal, but this chapter about, you know, only making friends with people who want the best for you, that's a brutal chapter. It's right, unfortunately. My sense is, is that you should surround yourself with people who genuinely want the best for you, or perhaps more specifically, genuinely want the best for the best part of you. And if you're if the people around you are not supporting you in your endeavors and they put you down and they punish you for your virtues or even punish you too intensely for your faults and fail to reward you when you're doing what you should be doing and fail to engage in reciprocal interactions, that there comes a point where you would be better off finding someone who is actually on your side. And that can even be the case with family members, although of course that's a very difficult decision to make. But sometimes people do have the misfortune of being tangled up with family members who are so, who are operating in a manner that's so counterproductive to their health that it's better for them, despite the pain, to cease communication with them. And, and sometimes, paradoxically enough, that can also facilitate communication because sometimes you have to draw a line in the sand before people are willing to undergo the serious self-consideration that pre would precede any real transformation. So. But I would say, even if, even if you don't like the idea of removing the toxic people in your life, you should certainly endeavor to surround yourself with the sorts of people that you would want to surround someone that you regarded as your friend or loved one. So you need to, you need to extend the same courtesy to yourself, especially to the part of yourself that's striving upward, that you would to someone that you cared for.